Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Hammer Podcast. I'm Jason. Today is October 12th, 2020, and I am speaking with Daniel. Daniel went to Tranquility Bay in Jamaica from 1998 to 2000, and then to the Cross Creek Manor from uh, 2000 to 2002. So, uh, and I'm going to let him share the rest of the story. I know he has a couple of other things, that, uh, other places that he went to, so we're going to let Daniel talk about that. Daniel, it's great to have you on the program. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Um, so, like I said, go ahead. The floor is yours. Sure, yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm not sure of the year uh, originally of of uh, the Outward Bound I started in Outward Bound uh, years before the other the other three programs. Um, that one wasn't that bad. It was a wilderness wilderness program. Mine was in the Everglades. Um, they'd take us out uh, on canoes, and uh, we kind of paddle around and, and do do different events or like uh, group group things to kind of get. Uh, you know, acquainted or whatnot. Okay. Um, I'm not really sure what it was for, like, or about. Uh, I'm not sure if it was my parents just trying to get me out of the house, <laughs> or you know, <laughs> anything like that. Um, but uh, I think it was a 30-day program. There was outward bound long term, and I think they had uh, group homes for. Uh, for runaways or delinquents, also, uh, but I'm not positive about you know those. I didn't go to that one. I went to the the short term. I think it was 30 days, um, and uh, it was a uh, it was highly annoying. Uh, not something I was used to, um, which I would end up getting used to <laughs> uh, going to programs. Um, I know they, they dropped us off at a certain point for a few days in a, in a certain location. They just give us a bag of fruits and nuts and stuff and said, here, you know, this is, you got to survive on this for the next two, two days, three days, whatnot, and uh, don't go out of your area or you're going to get lost and we can't find you. And, uh, yeah, so that, that one kind of sucked. I remember coming home from that, excuse me, and uh, asking my parents, like, you know, what, what, all, what was I for? You know, like, why, why, you know, why, they, why did I do that? And uh, they were just kind of like, oh, we thought it would be good for you. I was like, sure. Okay. And I kind of just took it at, at, at that and uh, went home. And, and then I, I, was sh I went to, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to say it. Uh, it wasn't a boarding school, but it was a, a school for delinquents that in Miami called Robert Rennick. Um, I know it was just a lock-in school. We, we get there, take the school bus there, and then uh, the doors were kind of locked behind you. You couldn't get out. Uh, huge barbed wire fences. Mm -hmm. I, I went there uh, for probably two months, and then I went to Miami Bridge. Miami uh, which, Bridge. Miami Bridge, yes. Um, Miami Bridge was, uh, it was a, a place for mostly delinquents and runaways. Um, I was, I was 13. This I remember because it was just before I went to Tranquility Bay, Jamaica. Uh, in fact, I went from Miami Bridge to Tranquility Bay. Um, so I was there for probably a month or two, uh, and I'd have to say, by all by all accounts, that was probably worse than Cross Creek Manor. Um, wow. Uh, I I remember I remember sleeping at a corner bunk and having to sleep with my face against the wall because other other kids there would throw boots at me at night, throw shoes, uh, come and have a blanket party. Uh, which would be putting stuff in um, in a sock and beating you with it at night. Right. Uh, I remember getting into fights numerous times. Um, it was uh, 
probably one of the worst places I've been to. Was, um, this, was this a Christian home? This was uh, no, not that I, not that I know of. Okay. Uh, as far as I remember, there was no real religion involved. Uh, they did have, uh, if you wanted to, they had church in the dining hall. If you wanted to go, if you wanted to go, okay. Uh, but it, it wasn't like uh, it wasn't mandatory, um, and you, you didn't have to go if you didn't want to. I do remember they had like movie nights and like they had. Uh, certain times where your parents could come and see you and stuff. And, uh, my parents didn't, uh, which is fine. <laughs> it happens. Uh, but right straight from there, uh, at, at 13, I was 13, uh, I went from there. My mom did pick me up from there and drove me straight to Miami International Airport. Uh, and we went to Jamaica. I flew out to Tranquility Bay, Jamaica. Bay. Um, Hot and tropical. Yes, very much so. Um, <laughs> I I don't recall if she went with me to the school. I remember getting dropped off at the airport. Oh, no, yeah, no, she did not go with me. She said that uh, somebody was going to be there to pick me up. She gave me a name. Um and I said, you know, sure, I'll, you know, I'll meet so and so. She said it was just another school, so I figured, you know, hey, go to school in Jamaica. It sounds like you know, a new, something new, you know, yeah. to go to. Um, and uh, I had no clue what I was in for at all. Um, so let's see. So yeah, so I I got there. I had a, a tub. And she had brought some clothes for me and some stuff like that. And uh, I was like, hey, you know, I get to go to school in Jamaica. I get to have, you know, some new clothes and stuff like that. And uh, they took it straight from me. said, you're not allowed to have anything in here. Um, it's your property, but you're not, <laughs> you're not getting anything. Like, they gave me some khaki, some khaki shorts, khaki shirt, some white boxers, and... Um, and uh, kind of just said, you know, here's some sandals. This is this is uh, the person that's going to take care of you, show you the ropes, show you around. Uh, which at that point, I, if I remember correctly, this was TV one. There was TV one, two, and three. And this was the first one. And I remember there being three because I was at all three. Mm -hmm. um, this one sucks so bad. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> <excuse me. clears throat> so let's see I, I remember getting there they took my tote they put it into a storage room and said uh, you know, this is your your, your your mentor they said your father this is your father he's going to be your father for the next you know week or two he's going to teach you the ropes and uh, that was that so and I believe I was with Confidence family is what it was called. Confidence family. Um, I do not remember the family rep's name, but it was a very common name for there. Uh, but I remember her telling me, "You're not going to be. You're not going to get all your family. You can write letters. You can receive letters. Uh, you can receive a certain amount of pictures." Um, and then, uh, then we went from there to Chow Hall because it was getting late. We ended up eating some some dumplings and some. Uh, dude, I don't even know what it was. Honestly, um, it was it good. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I always um, I always ask, how's the food? You know. <laughs> oh my gosh, man! It was. Uh, I, I, I don't even know. I don't even know what it was. I do remember this place was bad all the way around. But I remember my favorite food was the the beef patties. Beef patties, Just okay. Because was, uh, <laughs> that was the only good food we had. 
and it was still horrible. Like it was just not. <laughs> Not saying it was good, but it right. was better than the rest of the food. It was palatable, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, so I remember we had uh, we had dumplings the first night, and I'm from Florida. I've never there's a, there's dumplings here. I've never had dumplings before. You know, I it was I was like, dude, I don't, I don't know what this is, but I, I I'm almost positive for at least the first week, I would not eat anything at all, like, anything they had. Um, but after a while, I was like, dude, I'm, like, I'm either going to eat this or I'm going to starve, and I don't <laughs> don't really want to starve here, but I also don't want to run out. I don't really want to eat. Uh, so I ended up you know, just eating their food because I had to. Um, so I remember going from there. We went to the room, uh, which was... It was upstairs um, on the second level. It's very, hard, it's very hard to remember this one. This one was, I stayed there the shortest because they moved us uh, to the other facility. Right. Um, the crazy thing is I was only at that one for a few days, I believe. Well, being, that, we went, being, that, it was, being that it was Jamaica, I mean, was it a, a clean facility? <laughs> <laughs> that's right because you know usually usually when you when you see the commercials for jamaica they always show the really nice hotels they never show the poor side of jamaica you know it's yes yeah um it's, it's horrible okay uh, uh, this was very specific so <laughs> the question was was funny though uh due to the fact that we would sweep the dirt they would have a sweep dirt just sweep the dirt into that pile, then sweep it over there into that pile, then sweep it back over there. Just dirt. Like, you're sweeping dirt for nothing. Huh. Um, and then we'd mop the floors and then have to wash the mops by hand, with our hands. Just Ring them out, mop. yeah. And um, we also did our, we washed our clothes in buckets. We had no washing machines. We washed our clothes in buckets, hung them out to dry. Uh, and then if it wanted to rain for a week, we just have no, no dry clothes. Um, we showered outside in stalls. Um, no hot water. We never, never had hot water. The bathrooms, as far as I can remember, did not have doors okay. on, on most of them. Um, so and I remember... So no no privacy basically. Oh no no no. Oh, well. Everybody gets to watch it take a shit, huh? Wow. Uh, I mean, everyone kind of had their own little respect, like that. I'm not. Yeah. Now I I remember at TV two and three, we had doors, and that's that's another part of the rules that we had there was you had to ask permission to cross each door. So if you didn't see a staff, you were stuck in that room for a bit. Um, hmm. Yeah, you, 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 could, you had to ask permission to cross doorways. Uh, you couldn't cross your legs. You couldn't, uh, you couldn't talk without permission. You couldn't talk to another person without permission. Um, all the, the letters, you had to leave them open, and they would seal it later because they had to go through it and read. Um, Oh yeah, it was uh, pretty, pretty easy, but um, I know we would, uh, from there, uh, we were putting vans with our property and sent to uh, another one, and I don't remember that one much at all. I remember, I think it was, because we went from 1, TB1, to TB3. Then to TV two, which ended up being TV three, because they closed the other two. Okay. Which, which didn't make any sense, um, but I guess they had the buildings numbered. Okay. So we went from one to three to two, which ended up everyone calls TV two TV three because that was the last one uh, that was open. Um. So I'll skip from that one to TV2, which is the last one 
before I left, uh, because I, I do not recall the other one in the least. Um, but I remember getting there, and uh, it's and when you come in, there's a huge fountain, and then to the left you had a drive, then you had, uh, to the left of that was a tennis court and two basketball courts. Mm. And they had a little shoe thing in between, because you could only wear your shoes when you were either level four or when you were at, it, at the rec yard, uh, which was probably the most fun there was rec, uh, which I never got. Um, no, no, I, I got a few times. Uh, not saying I was like the worst kid, but I was definitely a pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> I was, I was, I was horrible. Um, but it, in all actuality, I, I was not horrible. Uh, they were just stupid fucking rules. I mean, you couldn't cross your ankles. Uh, you couldn't stand up or sit down without permission. Uh, you couldn't talk. If you were in line, you had to stand, uh, Heel to toe with the person in front of you, yeah. Which we all we all call butt to nut, dude. It's like and you're just all up in everyone's you know, space. It was just not <laughs> right. Not good. Not good in the morning. Um, <laughs> <as you're laughs> <enough. laughs> but <laughs> well, yeah, no. Uh, so yeah, so every morning we had a head count, so we'd have to come down the stairs or out of you know, and do head count, and then you had to go back and do cleaning. And then you had first first class, you had breakfast, then first class. And, uh, schedule. I don't remember the schedule specifically, um, but I know if you didn't get to sleep when you went to bed, you weren't sleeping. None that time, unless you were an OP, because then you could nap because you were on your face all day, which I spent probably. No, no. At, Okay, so I'll say this now for everyone that watches, or wants to watch this. Uh, I was in Tranquility Bay, Jamaica for two years uh, from start to finish. And then I was in Cross Creek Manor for another two years. So I, I was at 13 when I went in, and I was just about 18 when I left. Um, the funny thing is I just got a message on my phone from someone I graduated from Berkeley with right now. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's kind of funny. Very coincidental. Um, but yeah, oh no, it was. It was. Um, I think one of the worst parts was the seminars. Seminars were were. They, just, they tried to make you something that you weren't, or made you think something that you weren't or uh, tried to make you feel something that you either didn't want to or weren't feeling. So you kind of had to show feelings and emotions, even if it wasn't you know, there. One of the big big things with the program is fake it until you make it. Um, right. I couldn't fake it, <laughs> so I didn't make it. Like, it just was not working. The entire time I was in Tranquility Bay, I never came off level one. Yeah, no, I did. I never came off level one. Uh, I was, like I said, I was on OP, or observation placement, for probably, probably 80 or 90 percent of my time there at the entire two years. Uh, I have tons of people I can corroborate that uh, if anyone needs. Um, an observation placement is where you lay on your face on the concrete floor uh, and you don't move all day. You, you sit up on the floor, you sit on the floor for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's if you got breakfast. Um, and that was it. I did have worksheet a few times, which was it's just not kindergarten. But then I do it just to you know be done, right? Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I just I could not make it work. I couldn't do it. Um, 
it's not the fact that I wouldn't do it. It's when you're 13 years old. I mean, I'm 13. I can't stand up or sit down. I can't cross through a doorway. I can't wear shoes. I, you know, like there was just, you couldn't have a watch. You couldn't know what time it was. Um, Sounds like hell on earth. Uh, I haven't got to the worst part of it yet, which is the, the, the worst part. Um, I had numer numerous times uh, I had been thrown downstairs in a flight of steps from the classroom up top, down the steps. Um, they, they, I broke a bone on my foot from being kicked. I, uh, I was restrained probably most days, at least twice a day. Um, I broke my collarbone or the muscle in my shoulder. I had broken teeth. Um, numerous, numerous times I've, I've been hit with uh, walkie-talkies. Uh, I've been punched. Uh, they push you frequently. Uh, they, I mean, they, they, they would mentally, emotionally, and physically put you through hell on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm not going to name names as to who exactly it was. Right. Uh, but I was on OP. I was laying on my face on the floor, and I had to use the bathroom. So I got up, and I'm like, you know, because the, they sit outside on a, in a chair, in a, a little Rubbermaid chairs mm -hmm. right outside the, the, the door. He wasn't there, so I stood up and I'm like, hey, I need to use the bathroom. You know. And uh, he comes around the corner and smacks me in the face with a walkie-talkie straight upside my head. Um, and that they started restraining me. There was probably a good four or five of them. Uh, the worst part is that I think four out of the five was all, all their names were Mr. Neal. All four of them. Like, just, and they got all the same names. Um, and they, uh, yeah, they, they, they restrained me so hard that the, the back of my hand was touching the back of my head, uh, and I could hear it ripping, and then I heard a loud pop. Uh, they all got off of me, and they, they wouldn't give me, um, they would give me ice, they wouldn't give me, uh, medical attention, they, they just sat there, and then they came and gave me some food. Only to sit up and deal with it. That was it. Oh, yeah. Wow. Sounds like a bunch of sadists. It was, um, to say the least, yeah. Uh, they didn't care. They didn't care that I was, you know, 13, 14 years old. Um, to them, you know, you, you stood up without permission, you were going to get what's coming to you. And, um, I mean, shoot, I, I've been maced. I got maced one time by the owner of the facility, who you rarely saw. Uh, I mean, everybody knows the name. Uh, at, am I allowed to say the name of the... Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, so his name is J.K. 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 You can Google him. He's all over. I mean, you put in the word wasp, Tranquility Bay, and Google, and his, his name and face are going to pop right up. Pop right up. Um I, I was up near his house, you could say. He lived there. Uh, I was up there, and uh, I wasn't supposed to be. I mean, I wasn't really supposed to be anywhere. Uh, and so I, I go up, and I start banging on the door. He came out and just maced me. What? Oh, no, man. No, who are you? No, what are you doing here? He flipping maced me. Um Wow, that was fun. That, that was a uh, that was tough. Yeah, uh, I didn't even see it coming. Honestly, I saw the door hit and it made spoof. I was like, ah. So your eyes, your eyes got the full, the full Dude, hit. Man, I. Oh. The worst part is it happened so quick. I didn't even have time to yell or scream. It was just like, man. Right to the floor. Yeah. Oh shit! Oh, that was that was it. 
And then I remember I was on, on OP for a good good another week and a half for that one. They are like, what were you doing? I was like, I don't know. How did I get maced? Do you, do you remember how many kids were there? <laughs> oh, shit. At a time? Uh, okay, so there was... I want to say 15 to 20 per family, if not more. Uh, and there was... Yeah, es estimations. Five or six families. There was, there was probably a... a I want to say 100 plus. Easy. Um, and that was just the boys' side. We weren't allowed to see or communicate with the girls' side. And as far as I know, they had way more on their side than we had on ours. Uh, because if we went to the seminars, which was once a month, mm -hmm. the boy side would have on average 30 to 50, maybe a few more. The girl side would have like 80 to 100. Like, wow. Easy. And that, that may be higher or lower depending on the month. Um, as far as as far, Give or take. as far as the people that were there, the kids, I mean, there were some Americans, I'm, I'm guessing, like you uh, and, and some uh, other. Almost all the kids were from the United States. Wow, okay. I thought... I, I, there I, was... I, I thought maybe a majority of them would be from Jamaica. There was one kid from Jamaica the entire time I was there. Um, wow. and boy, was he hilarious. He was so funny because he would curse them out up and down in Patois. <laughs> um, he would, too. He, oh, he'd get in them so hard, too. Uh, one was from Trinidad and Tobago, and one was from Bermuda. And the rest were from the States. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know about the girls. Right. No. But uh, apparently, the U.S. has the worst kids ever anywhere. So that's um, what that's what I've heard. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> did your parents? Yeah. Uh, did your parents pay for this school? <laughs> uh no. My my grandmother paid for it. Okay. Um. I mean, I, I paid for it, ultimately. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, in total, I would want to say they paid over over $100,000. Wow. Yeah. Not cheap. No. I, I told I Now, my parents, to this day, hate me. Um, they, as much as they say, oh, we don't hate you. No, you hate me, dude. Tell me for a fact you hate me. Um, I told them one day, I was like, listen, you could have taken that $100,000, given it to me, and he'd have never seen me again. He wouldn't have had to send me to a program. He wouldn't have had to, you know, do anything. I'd have, I'd have bought a little plot of land, built me a little tiny home, and you would have never heard from me again. No problem, no questions asked. Uh, no, yeah, no, they, they, a, a hundred, a, over 100000 I believe. Wow. Flushed right down the toilet. Yeah, right. Oh, I did it. Yeah. Oh, man. That'd have been a nice new house. You know, all sorts of stuff. Um, oh, yeah. That, that leads me to the, the fact that when I when I got home from Cross Creek, uh, I, I had my 18th birthday. I went out with some friends, uh, and then I came home. When I came home, all of my stuff was in trash bags in the front of the house, uh, and they had changed the locks. They wouldn't even open. They wouldn't open the door. They opened the window and said, "You know, uh, you can't live here anymore." I was like, "You know, you could have given me like a heads up, something or something." Yeah. Uh, you could have let me know. Um, I mean, even you know, like, can I crash in the backyard? Or, you know, let me sleep on the couch for a night so I can figure this stuff out in the morning. Uh, and they said, no, no, you got to go or we're going to call the cops. Wow. But, you know. So your, your, your time your time at, at uh, Tranquility Bay ends, and they you get 
you go back to the states after Tranquility uh, Bay, back okay. to Florida, so, and then they ship you off to Utah. Is that how it? So, uh, so the the family rep that I had in Jamaica, because I moved from from one family to another. I think I, I left on an excellent family for confidence. Uh, can't remember exactly. I left from. I, the family rep talked to me. She said, "Listen, your 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 parents are going to pull you from this program, uh, but you're going somewhere else." I said, well, "Yeah, I kind of figure that." I mean, from bad news to worse news, yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, so I, I, you know, they, they put me to pack all my stuff. Uh, I get in the this little white Toyota, funny looking thing that drives on the opposite side of the road. I'm like, oh, it's crazy. I get to the airport. <laughs> I get to the airport. They ship me. I fly from Montego Bay Airport to Miami International. I get there. And I, I meet my mom. She said, listen, we're not, you're not coming home. Uh, we're going to Las Vegas. I said, oh, cool. I, I get Go from Jamaica to shitty program, I get to go gamble. <laughs> I'm not old enough to, but hey, whatever works. Yeah. So we fly to Las Vegas. We I spent the night in Las Vegas in a hotel room. Okay. This is where it gets kind of crazy. So I I'm standing outside the hotel room in Las Vegas, knowing I'm about to go to another program. And. I, Honest to God, dude, my, the, the, I was thinking, should I run or not? And uh, I'm thinking, all right, well, I'm, I'm underage, but this is Vegas. Like, like, I don't know what I'm thinking, but I'm like, I can, I can make it out here. Uh, but I didn't. I, I stayed, I went back in, went to bed. Uh, the next day we drove from from Las Vegas to La Burke in Utah. Uh, I remember getting there, and I'm like, oh, shit, this again. In my head, I'm like, oh, this, this is bullshit. Um, so I get in there, and uh, they have me change, change my clothes. Uh, it's, uh, from, I don't even remember what I had on, honestly. I don't even know if I was still wearing the Cross Creek uniform or not, or the, the Tranquility Bay. I just thought I was wearing something funny, weird. Um, and I get there, and they change me out into these khaki pants and like a orange. Was it orange or was it like gray? It's either an orange or gray T-shirt that said Cross Creek Manor or Cross Creek Center. Okay. Um, and uh, they give me shoes, which I ha I hadn't worn shoes in over two years. I was like, oh, oh dude, this is cool. <laughs> I was like, I don't have to like turn these in or put these anywhere. They're like, no, hey, you wear your shoes. That's what you're to do shoes. I was like, oh, I was you know, I was all happy. I'm like, oh, I get shoes. I get like comfortable clothes. Uh, man, it was a completely different world. Now. Mind you, my, my experience of this program would be different than other people from, from Cross Creek, only, probably only because I came from, in my perspective, a worse facility. Okay. So I, I thought it was heaven. I'm like, oh, dude, I love this. Uh, not to take away the fact that other people would have had different experiences. Uh, I've heard a lot of other people say that it was, it was really bad. I... On the other hand, I, not that I didn't mind it, but coming from where I came from, okay. I was quite pleased that I wasn't getting hit with radios or restrained every day um, or, like, yelled at for looking up from my, my work. Um, so I, I, was, I was happy with the change. Mind you, I still never got off level two. I never got up to level two. <laughs> I was 
I was there for two years also. Um, the, the family rep that I had there uh, was cool. The therapist I had there was awesome. Um, not that they were good people. I don't, you know, they could have done stuff. That, you know, I don't know. They didn't do it to me. Um, they did try to help me as much as possible. Uh, they even they sent me on hikes, which you weren't supposed to do until you were a certain level. Um, I never reached those levels, but they were like, let's see if this motivates him uh, to to get the levels that he can right. do and stuff. Um, and again, I just couldn't freaking do it. I, I just couldn't get there. I couldn't. Uh, and I, I don't know what it was. I just I don't like uh, I don't like authority. I don't like being told what to do. I don't like being told what not to do. Um, and uh, it just it didn't work. Um, uh, what was the What was the discipline like? I mean, did they did they whip you? Did they restrain you like they did in Tranquility Bay? Or uh, not me per se. Okay. Uh, now I would get I would get consequences and we have to go to worksheet. So I'd have to go, you know, do a little, they would play an audio, like a, an audio tape. And you have to fill out a, a sheet, a, like a questionnaire. The worst part is like, right, so I was in there so much, I knew the answers, <laughs> like off the top of my head. Yeah. So I would be done before they got the first, like, section of test done. I hand it in, they check it, and they ended up, <laughs> they would end up like just having me sit there for 45 minutes and then just go because they're like, you're going to get all the questions either way. Like, right. uh, you know, you don't have to listen. You can, we can put you in there, give you the test, and you get it right without listening to the tape. Uh, I was like, yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it was because I was that bad. Uh, but it, <laughs> um, I mean, now I, I do find it kind of funny that I was just I was must have been a, a horrible person to try to deal with. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I legit was probably just a pain in the ass. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, who who puts a thirteen year old kid through this shit? I mean, you know, I mean, yeah. To me, yeah. it doesn't make sense. Like now. And that's the thing with, with programs. I hear most kids like I was I was in gangs, I was affiliated with gangs, uh, I was I wasn't going to school, I was doing drugs and drinking, or I was sexually active, or this stuff I, I never drank. I don't do drugs, I never did. Um, I miss some school. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, the schools I went to you wouldn't go in. I mean, like, fair and square. Hmm. I grew up in, in South Dade, South Miami. I was probably, there's probably 10 white kids in my school. I got picked on. But not, I'm not racist. I got picked on. That's all. Like, it, you know, I was I was the fat, white, slow kid in rec. They didn't pick me for nothing. Um, if I was going to steal some, I didn't try to hide it. I just took your shit. You know, like, <laughs> so it wasn't like I was being bad. I just was doing me and people didn't like it. I mean, right. like, that, you know, like, I got picked on, so I fight. Like, it wasn't like I, I didn't get into the fight for no reason. They were picking on me. I punched it. I mean, what, I don't see what's wrong with that. <laughs> you defended yourself, basically. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. to this day, I still, I, I, I still do. I mean, not saying it's right, but I mean, like, if someone gets in your face, I mean, what are you gonna do? I, I'm not just gonna sit there. Right. It's just not. That's that's just not. What, that's not me. Well, I wouldn't expect anyone else to either. If I got in somebody's face, I'd expect you to throw a punch, please. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Especially if you're if you're the one doing the bullying. It's, yes, exactly, exactly. By all means, please hit. Me. Like, and if I deserve it, I deserve it. And yeah. Really, um, 
I'm not saying I'm not going to hit you back. But you hit me fair and square. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to, you know, complain about it later. I was probably being really stupid. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Cross Creek was, was, it was bad. It was a program. Um, it, by all means, it wasn't like, you know, like a, a good school. Um, not saying that, you know, people weren't abused there. But they, I mean, I'm positive people were. Um, I myself was not. Right. Uh, but um, it was it was still very very disciplined. Uh, they had consequences just like just like uh, uh, Jamaica. Uh, Jamaica to me was was way more strict um, and way more more brutal, hands on type. Um, okay. And again, it, people in Cross Creek may may have you know got their hands put on and stuff like that, uh, depending on the year, uh, the place. Um, just not me. Um, and uh, so you finish Cross Cross Creek Manor. Yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. you f you fly back to Florida. <coughs> Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. And then you find your clothes and bags in the front, oh. on the front steps, like you were saying before. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> before I get to that okay. specifically, uh, so in Utah they have a graduation. You have to go through PC one and two, which are parent-child seminars. Okay. That you go to with your parents. So we had we had finished PC two, which is when you graduate. Um, Mind you, you're supposed to be level six to graduate. I was the only one still on level one. A lot of the other graduates were like, you don't deserve this shit. Uh, I was like, I don't deserve this shit either. Uh, but, you know, like, I've been in here four times with you have, so shut up. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, these kids are graduating these programs in six, six months to a year. I was in there for four years. Well, he got. I don't care how quick you got your levels. I'm leaving. Like I don't care what you say. I've done more seminars than you will ever see. Like no, nah, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Period. So I, I did the PCs. Well, it, they. <laughs> my therapist said no matter what happens at this seminar, I don't care if you get kicked out or not. You're going home. Like just do the freaking seminar. Right. Go home. Uh, so I did. So we drove from we drove from Laverkin, Utah. Laverkin or Hurricane? See, that's the crazy part. My the family I was in there. Excuse me. We actually lived off grounds at a different facility. Okay. And, drove. and dude, that was so much fun. Because we got to leave the facility. Uh, it was like daily too. I was like, oh, I get to go in a car. <laughs> um, <laughs> it sounds really stupid, but it's true. It was like, oh, yeah. Hey. And, um, <laughs> uh, this damn school. Uh, so, as far as I can remember, to be honest with you, I got to one facility and I ended up in a different facility. Wow, how did that happen? Yeah, how did that happen? <laughs> this sound, this sounds retarded. No, I got to a facility. Is that the same facility? You've been to so many, Dan. No, You've no. been to so many. It, it was two different. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, it's, I swear there's, a, there's two. Because the one I got to isn't the one I ended up at. It doesn't make sense. Hmm. The one I got to originally, you, 
you came in and there's a water fountain inside and I slept to a room on, in, on the left. The one I ended up on is now a Zion Inn in Laverton, Utah, which is a bigger facility and I know because I slept upstairs a few rooms back on the right. That's two different facilities. Uh, okay, I, when I got there, I was in Cross Creek Manor. I ended up at Cross Creek Center. Ah, okay. Or vice versa. It could be backwards. Yes, because when I started, it was just boys at the facility. And I remember that specifically because... I watched the planes hit the trade towers there. I was sitting in the classroom watching the news and the plane hit the trade tower. Oh, they had TVs there? Yes. Wow. So, yeah, we didn't have that in the way either. <laughs> kind of drew little stick figures. So, yeah, no, because so, I remember sitting on the floor like, oh, dude, that's not even, that's not right. Um, and then I ended up at the facility that was Boys Edwards, oh. which was Cross Creek Manor. So I started at Cross Creek Center, went to Cross Creek Manor. It's okay. all the same, the same, it's all was. And it, you know, it's all the same. Uh, the same yeah, yeah. Same area, yeah, okay. Yes, I believe one was in Hurricane and one was in LaBerta. Now I'm amazed uh, that you went to uh, that one of the actually that one of those places was co-ed because they usually separate the males from the females. Oh no, we were separated. We were oh. separated. It was, um, the building is a huge. It's a huge cube. Okay. And the boys had had one big L, and the girls had another big L. And you never saw them. Yeah, he, he did. I mean, he wasn't supposed to. Caught a glimpse but, of him, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you'd always have one like, oh, I think that one's cuter, you know. Yeah. So on and so forth. Uh, and then you'd always be like, oh, is she there? And, you know, all the, all, I mean, all the guys did it. I don't know if the girls did. Uh, <laughs> now, we did have a few code ed events. When I did the community service, that was co-ed, and when we had seminars, it was co-ed, and me and the specific person that messaged me had a, uh, a dance, dances together, not okay. like, not dances like, like high school dance, like, um, like a, they had dance crew type stuff. You could okay. Do. That was co-ed. Again, usually for upper, le upper levels. Um, again, I was not. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. A few of them. Yeah, I, I do remember. Ish, kind of. I remember I was a horrible dancer. Uh, <laughs> if I brought that up to her, she'd probably laugh hysterically. Cause I, I'm pretty sure she was my dance partner. Uh, <laughs> and I, dude, I, I still talk to some of these people 20 years later. Um, I told her, oh, that's why she messaged. I told her I was doing, I was going to be doing this. And I think everyone's, you know, highly supportive of me. Like, oh, we got your back. You know, you're doing real well. Get this all heard. Um, and, yeah, so, I mean, and even, even like I said, for them, I, I don't know what happened on the female side. Um, I know it was probably extremely traumatic. Um And I, I would never say otherwise. Uh, I every everything that they say, I would believe a hundred percent because I've been there. Right. Um, right. I'm by their side no matter what, and and I would take their word over anybody else's, uh, no matter what. Um, I trust my fellow survivors. I see and hear them. 
period. Um, and I wouldn't have it any other way. They are probably the most supportive people I have. Uh, to this day, my parents do not believe me. Um, they, they refuse to talk about it. Um, and that's fine. That, that's your right. prerogative. If that's how you feel about it. That's fine. Uh, I know otherwise. If I, I, have, I have seven kids. Okay. I, I would never send a single one of my kids to one of these programs. Um, Wise choice. Just out of, I've been there. I've done that. Um, I know what they're capable of. I've been through it, uh, and and I refuse refuse to have my kids go through that. And like and like I've told a lot of a lot of survivors that I've had discussions with, you know, if 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 the parents go to the website, you know, oh, of course they're going to show the kids on their best behavior, smiling, having a great time. Yes, they yes, don't yes. show the inner workings of what's going on. No, no. Every time a parent showed up, it was all goody two shoes yeah. and. Like if, okay, so in Jamaica, if I was on OP, if a parent showed up, they told us to sit up and they give us extra food, uh, they try to make it look good, mind you, there was one kid there, did not care. As soon as parents got there, he would act a fool. <laughs> like, he's, he's like, I'm going I'm to make sure they know about this. Uh, and they would restrain him until he started screaming. Um, I remember his name, but I'm not going to say it. Right. Because I, I don't think he, I, I don't think he want me to say it. Yeah, um, that's fine. But dude, he 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 legit would like flip out intentionally, <laughs> just because he knew either they were gonna a let him do it or b they were gonna hear him getting restrained. Right, and they would well, probably kick it oh they, they would probably think twice about sending their kid there. <laughs> right there, man. The worst part is so I I went through pictures of me in the, in the school. And um, I do not understand how my parents did not see how hurt I was. Uh, I don't understand how they couldn't see how bad it was just by looking at me. Um, I, I don't. I don't get. I don't understand so, it. Some parents can be in denial, or or just a, a, not ashamed, but just regretful. That they sent their child there, you know, and they, they they don't want to face it, so they just rather just not talk about it, and just yeah. let it. Hope hopefully it, it just, you know, well, it just goes away. I, I have asked my parents. I said, listen, you know, what what do you think? Uh, you know, like what, what do you think I went through? Like I I've, I've told you this a hundred times. Like, it it was a living hell. Like I can't I cannot get over it. I had nightmares. I can't sleep. Um, they're like, oh, it was the best thing we ever did to you. You know, it was the best thing we could do for you. It saved your life. I'm like, from what? Like, I, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, from like, what? <laughs> what? Like, I didn't, I wasn't going out shooting people. I wasn't, like, doing drugs. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't stealing your car. I was skipping a few days a week of school, and then you sent me to a school I couldn't even leave. So, I mean... Hell, what, what exactly was I doing that was so bad? Maybe just a you know a month or two in juvie probably would have done you good, you know, <laughs> instead of taking you to Jamaica to go to that place. I, you know I, I mean? really wonder. I wonder what it would have done. I mean, but the worst part is they they couldn't have sent me to juvie because I didn't do anything. Like if I was doing drugs, they caught me with some well, drugs. You were you, know? you said you were skipping school, so that's truancy. The you worst know. part is, but it wasn't enough. To, for it to to go to that right okay like but that was the thing I was smart enough that I would you know all right so I I miss maybe two to three days a month oh okay after that month or that quarter it's like a new slate so right. I would you know just skip two days here one day here another day there a month and then like but I would pick and choose which days I'd skip because I knew it wouldn't go on the truth record Okay. And my parents are like, "Oh, he's outsmarting the system," and I'm like, "I'm like, well, then why don't you just let me stay home for this time?" You know. Like, the worst part is, so I would take the bus to school. I would get to school, 
get off the bus and start walking home. Because by the time I got home, the school bus was stopping to drop all the rest of the kids off. That's how far I lived from the school. Okay. So I was literally, my entire day was just walking home from school. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. Um, yeah, uh, it, I mean, it's not like I, I ran away from home. I, I didn't do anything like really. I, I, okay, I broke into my neighbor's house one time and, and stole a flashlight. Oh, uh, there you go. Years in prison for that. You know. Dude, right though, man. Oh, it was. Yeah. <laughs> it was a cool flashlight, though, man. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> Way worth it. Wait. I don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't have it anymore. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, it was. Uh, I, yeah, it was, it was horrible. But yeah, so I, I did get home. Uh, I was there. Ah, we got out. I I graduated on my dad's birthday. So it must have been like April something, I believe. Uh, and it was the beginning of May. What was August? I don't know when my dad's birthday is. So I, don't, I don't talk to him. Um, but it August? Oh. I can't. I don't even know what day okay. it is. It was your dad's uh, birthday. It was your dad's birthday. It was my dad. It was my dad's birthday. We graduated. Uh, I got home. I was home for a few months. Uh, I think you're supposed to write a home plan, which are like rules to follow when you uh -huh. get home. Uh, and apparently, I was not following my home plan uh, very well. Uh, but I mean, I just got out of a program after four years. Sorry about your luck, but I'm really not. Not gonna be following these rules very well, because <laughs> even if you send me back, I only got a month or two left, and, uh, and I'm walking. Well, for four years, all you were doing was following rules. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it was one of those things where, like, if if you're if you say we're going to an airport, I'm ditching. You're not gonna catch me. <laughs> like, and let, not, but there was some people that. Uh, these two guys would come and pick you up in the middle of the night. Um, it did not happen to me. Again, uh, I, and I, now I've heard of them doing it. I've seen them come to the facility and drop uh, kids off uh -huh. uh, in handcuffs and all. Um, so I know it's true. Uh, but yeah, no, they, they would wake you up in your bed at like four in the morning and say you can either do this the easy way or the hard way. Um, but I don't know, dude, if you come at me at four in the morning with two big dudes, I'm, one of you is going to get kicked in the nuts. I'm telling you, like, <laughs> I don't. You're not, not going to do that. Like, uh, but yeah, no. Uh, so I mean, even if they had done that, you don't, you only got a certain amount of time before you can't hold me anymore. Um, and I went willingly because I didn't know what I was getting into. Uh, Mind you, if I had known now what I, you know, like back then, if I knew what I do now, I mean, no way in hell you could have got me to go to Jamaica. No way. <laughs> Not going to happen. Nope. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, Jamaica was the worst of the worst. Mind you, there was a uh, high impact. I've heard high impact was worse. I've heard a few places were worse. Um, but me in particular, Jamaica was the worst I had been to other than Miami Bridge. Now, now that place, Tranquility Bay, is not open anymore, correct? Uh, no, no. Well, Tranquility Bay is not open anymore. Good. Uh, Cross, Cross Creek is not anymore. I believe, as far as I know, uh, Wasp was disbanded. Uh, I don't know the reason. Um, I mean, obviously there's a reason it was shut down. Right. Um, but I, I don't know specifically the reason it was shut down. I'm assuming it was because of uh, abuse allegations, um, which I totally believe. I, I was I was abused emotionally, physically. Um, so I, I know for a fact uh, it happened. 
now, for, now, for the people who are watching who don't know what WASP means, it means Worldwide Association of Specialty Programs, yes. which means they specialize in torturing you and making you miserable. <laughs> yes, I, I fully agree with that. Yeah. Fully. Yeah. And, it, and, it's uh, not, and it's not just Tranquility Bay and Cross <coughs> Creek Manor. There's many other places that are associated or were associated with this WASP uh, program. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There was, uh, at the time I was going to WASP, or Tranquility Bay and Cross Creek, uh, there was numerous, numerous schools. Um, a lot of them were being shut down or on the verge of being shut down when I left. Uh, and then everything kind of crumbled uh, just just after, as far as I know. I, I want to say 2009-ish. I could yeah. be completely off, uh, but I'm, a, I'm assuming about 2009 uh, is when everything kind of came to a, a crashing halt for, for WASP. Um, well, good. Yeah. Good. Well, That's great news. Now, if we could just get them all shut down, that would be great. <laughs> that is that is absolutely our aim. Um, I am part of you know a big group of people that are uh, fighting our way to getting um, <clears throat> me, getting these programs shut down. Now, this um, this is a Facebook group. Um, or is there a <laughs> Facebook group? I do not know. You do not know. Okay. I well, I don't. I don't know what I'm allowed to say. Okay, that's fine. That's uh, fine. Due to copyright or you know stuff like that. Right. Um, I got gotcha. you. Uh, there we have hashtags that we use, um, and we communicate mainly by by Facebook or Messenger. Um. But uh, it, what I'll do is I will. I'll talk to some of the people in there, some of the administration, right. and see if, if I can tag tag this in it or tag you in sure. it. Well, the reason why I'm asking is if there's people out there who went to Tranquility Bay or Cross Creek Man who have not yet been able to get or find a group. I mean, you know, if there's one out there, you know, it would be great yes, if they yes. could get in there um, and, and, and be among the people who shared their experience. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. Oh no, uh, I would, I would, I, I would get in contact with them as, as soon as tonight. Sure. And uh, see if uh, if I can't put it in the you know in the description or yeah, I mean. Way. Um, and and if if yes. if it's a private group, hey, you know that's that's fine. I'm sure people who who have not <laughs> found it yet will probably be able to. They'll probably once they watch this, they'll be able to, they'll search frantically on Google or something and try and find it. So yes, yeah. Group. I mean, um, it's it's on Facebook. It is a group. Uh, it is it is private. it is private. Yes. Um, it's it's private to survivors of. Uh, one of them is specifically WASP survivors, so people only from WASP programs. Right. Um, as far as I know, you can you can hashtag I see you survivor. Yes. Um. Or hashtag breaking code silence. Um, uh, yeah, I, and, I usually and, put those in the description. So yeah. Yes, uh, uh, I'm. I'm all for both of those. I'm all for uh, for all of us survivors to have a voice and be heard. Mm -hmm. um, I have to give give mad props to um, to, to a lot of people that that have uh, been helping our cause. You know, recently, um, they've they've helped us get our get be heard, um, and uh, they're doing an, an amazing job. They're doing awesome. Uh, I love it. It's great. Um, doing this was tough. Um, I've never spoke publicly or said anything about it uh, via video or, or anything else. Uh, the only people that actually know anything about it are other survivors. Mm -hmm. um, uh, other than that, I, I don't really, I don't say much to anybody. It's, it's, it wasn't something that I'm proud of. Uh, I'm still not proud of it, but I, I'm, 
going to make sure that we're heard so that it doesn't happen to other people, right. other children. You know? Right. And, and like, uh, like I said before when we had talked on the phone, I, there's a lot of yes. people that have been at these homes that are very skeptical, which I understand. Oh, yes, absolutely. And there are some that are scared, which is understandably, understandable also. Absolutely. And, you know, some of them, some of them I've, I've only talked to by text, and they decide to back out, which is perfectly fine. Yes, and yeah. Some have said, yes, let's do it. And the word's getting out there. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. The word is getting absolutely. out there. It's, it's going to get out there. Yes. <laughs> and plus, with the help of, you know, a big celebrity like Paris Hilton... You know, oh, she she's was, amazing. She, she did yeah, great. She was, I believe, at the, at the Provo Canyon. Provo Canyon. Um, so, you know, with, with her help, being that she is a celebrity, she has probably millions of viewers and followers. Oh, my gosh, she does. You know, yes. So that, that helps. And also, it's not just the celebrities. It's people like you and some of the other survivors out there who, who do these podcasts. And it's not just me. I, there's yeah. uh, Vic, uh, Pieces of Victory with Janine Miller. You have Circle of Hope with Amanda Householder. All these podcasts, yes, that are that are out there and um, are telling their, uh, you know, getting these stories out there so they could be heard. Which oh yeah, and I, I also have to give my props to, to Paris for uh, for coming out with her documentary. Yes, uh, that this is Paris is is absolutely amazing. Me, I, I watched it. I loved it. I have um, I haven't seen it, but I I, I plan to. Uh, you gotta watch it. It's, it's she. She did such a good job. Um, and and then uh, Jackson, Paris Jackson. She she came out and you know, hey, I, I've been through there, been there, and that was awesome. And then Kat Von D. She's you know another one. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, that that kind of gave me the courage to to do this uh, and to have my voice, you know, out there, you know, it, it's not just them. It's not, you know, just us. It's not, it's, there's a lot of us. There's right. Thousands of us. And of course, the way YouTube works, um, the more people subscribe to the channels that do these podcasts, the more they will be shown, uh, like, or if you like the, the, the podcast, the channel, it's seen more. You know what I mean? Yeah, if, yeah. Uh, when, when people go to YouTube and they go to their their front page, all the yeah. uh, the ones that have the most likes are the ones that are on those chat on those pages. <laughs> so they'll be able to see them. So for anybody out there, if you want to see more of these podcasts, either you can subscribe to the channel or like the like the videos, and Absolutely. it gets it gets shared more when you do that kind of stuff. I so, uh, I know I'm probably going to share it, and uh, there's you know, I might get like two or three views on it. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I have had numerous people um, ask me, are you serious? Okay, so I'm not even joking. I just got a message from my mom saying I have a bag of mail at her house. <laughs> the, o the only way the word is going to get out is if people talk about it. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. And like yes. I said, for the people that, that don't want to talk about it and keep it to themselves, that's perfectly fine. You know yes. I mean? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. If you're not ready or you don't want to, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, There's people out cool. there who are willing to get the word out, and, yes. and then not, not to say that the people that are not going to talk about it are cowards. They're not. You know what I no, mean? No. To, to no. Be not, through, not to, to go through what they went through, that takes a lot of guts. You know what I mean? So. Yes. Yeah. No. Just, we're we're some we're some really tough tough uh, tough adults now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, well, Daniel, it's it's been great, man. It's been great. Yes, thank you. Thank you for letting me uh, get this out there. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I'm going to end the podcast. Stay on for a minute. I'm going to chit-chat with you real quick, okay? Sure, yeah. Okay. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching the Hammer Podcast. I want to thank Daniel for being here today, sharing his story. And for everybody out there, if you want to be on the podcast... There's a number on the top of the channel page where you can uh, t send me a text. Uh, let me know. Let me know your name. And how we can get a hold of you so we can schedule a, a podcast. Okay. So for the Hammer Podcast, I'm Jason. You take care of yourself and you take care of each other.